Okay, this is the final video on the solar video on the solar water heater that I built. Sorry it took so long for the last one, but been really busy, but I've been wanting to get this done. So it is actually all up and running. Um, I apologize, it's kind of cramped quarters in here in the basement where I put this in, but I'll try to run through some of the, the setup here. Some of you already talked about, so this um, you know, is the line, the hot line going out from the top of the tanks. That gauge there is the return to the collector, um, temperature going back out. Um, down here is the temperature coming in. It's winter time right now and it's dark out, so there's no, uh, no heating going on. Let me just explain um, the process of filling it here. So, as you can see, there's a, a few valves here. When you want to fill it, um, this valve has to be shut off because this is the loop that comes, you know, from the collector into the water heater here, uh, right in through here, heats the coil, which in turn heats the water that's for our domestic water. Comes out here, goes back to the collector to be reheated. So in order to fill it to get the air out of it, you have to close this off so it can't make a loop through here. Um, and you open up one of these, feed the system, which sends it out to the collectors. It cannot go back into the water heater this way. Sends it out to the collector, forces it to fill into the water heater up here, through the coil, and then back out and out this faucet here. And that's how you bleed the air out of it. You've got to keep pressure on it um, as you're doing it. And you do that by this gauge here. You need to watch in the pressure gauge because this is a pressure and temperature gauge. Um, you keep your pressure up, you know, 10, 12, 20, degree, 20 pounds or so uh, while you're doing that to force the air through the system. And, uh, you know, if it drops, you just, you know, lower the, the valve going out so it's keeping, keeping that on the system. And then I'll just have it, uh, have the antifreeze going into a bucket here while I was, you know, the extra to get the air out. Once that's all done, while it's still pumping and you know you got your pressure up, you shut your valve so you don't lose your pressure and you don't let any air back in. And once that's all closed, then you can go ahead and open this valve up and then you got a complete loop, a closed loop system out to the collector, into the coil, out to the collector, into the coil. Once the water is heating, of course, uh, it's in these two tanks. I have a two tank set up here. I'll do a, a shot from back a ways here again in a minute so you can kind of get a better view of that. This tank is the tank that's doing the heating. It has the coil in it like I just explained. As that gets hot, of course, the water, the hot water is rising in that um, and, you know, it's going to the top. If it's warm enough, how I have it go to the second tank is just a thermal siphon. So it comes out of the top apologize it's a little bit dark over here but it comes out of the top here which is also where it goes um, you know into the house but you can see this pipe right here it comes over right here and then it goes into the top of the second tank which is right here and if you notice I think I explained in an earlier video the second tank is t is higher it's set up higher the tank that is not doing the heating so any extra hot water that's coming out of that is going to want to tend to end up in the top of this tank uh, so if no water is being drawn as that water is heating over in the primary tank it you know most of it ends up the hottest of the water will end up in the top of this forcing the cold water in this tank down and out the bottom of the second tank it drops down goes over and in underneath these valves here, you can see there is the feed, uh, well, part of the, you know, it's just a loop continued for the domestic water. The cold water would go in there uh, and then back in here and be heated. So if no one's drawing any water, that's just a continuous cycle as it's being heated. So you always end up with your hottest water at the top of this tank. So when someone does draw water, as you can see, the, the crossover pipe, the connection that goes to the domestic water is closest to this uh, secondary tank. Um, the idea behind that was kind of my design of having the higher tank and the, the connection closer to this higher tank is going to want to draw the hottest off first. 
and then that continues on to my regular hot water heater off my boiler system so if this is not heating the water is heated before it reaches up to our showers and faucets um, but it's going to want to tend to take the hottest water off the top of this tank first and um, as it does that of course water is rising out of that one as well at the bottom here to feed the whole system I think I explained this a little bit in an earlier video before it was all hooked up is this red line back here it's PEX uh, comes in and it goes into that bottom crossover pipe so the cold water is always going in and again the cold water going in is closest to the lowest tank the primary tank because uh, you want the coldest water going in uh, past that coil to warm up before it starts the cycle so that is the setup there uh, and how it works and if you have to drain it of course you got your valves you can shut things down drain it off and I will back up here a little bit so you can get a better view of the setup. I still got some leftover stuff in there from working on it. Um, oh, and also I didn't mention, but there is the expansion tank right there. That is in the closed loop side of the collector. You got to have a room for that uh, for the water or the coolant refrigerant, not refrigerant, but the antifreeze to expand because when that gets hot out in that collector you got to have some room for growth of that water for the expansion so you got to have an expansion tank in there so you don't you know blow a line on the other side of that I don't know if we'll ever be able to see it maybe is of course the circulator so and that is hooked up to the um, collector control upstairs um, so that is the circulator that will kick on and circulate the water to the collector and back down to the um, water heater. Now the other part I didn't point out yet is that uh, control unit upstairs has two points down here that's reading temperature. Of course it's reading the collector but then also it's reading the temperature right here close to the coil. So I know what the coil temperature is, you know, uh, you know what the transfer rate is from the hot water coming in by checking these gauges and then what the water, domestic hot water is heating here at the lower side by the coil. And the second sensor is actually on the second tank right here near the top. So I can I know what my hottest water is. At the top of the highest tank I have another um, gauge, a temperature gauge, a reader, a sensor that goes up to that control box. So I always know what the water temperature is going out just before it goes into my uh, regular water heater so I know how much uh, you know I'm saving like so if I want my water heater set at 120 if the water at the top of this thing is at 120 I know that thing's hardly going to kick on because it's getting you know good hot water before it gets there uh, if this is lower then of course then I know what uh, you know how much that's going to have to heat it and then I can also see the difference between the top here you know the difference between the temperature uh, from the top of the tank and of course that other sensor which also allows me to tell how well the thermal siphon is working and I gotta say it works much better than I thought it was gonna. It does not take uh, long at all and the hot water boy it goes up even that small pipe three-quarter pipe she transfers right over to that second tank so again I'm gonna back up here a little bit tight quarters uh, and get a better Hopefully, sorry about the racket. I guess you really can't see it much better. Um, but you know, this is my water, regular water tank coming into the house from the well. And you can see over there is the oil tank. When I when we built the house, we tried to put all of the utilities in one section down the basement so we could have a finished basement, which we do. So all of this is all in one section. Uh, if I keep backing up, you will be able to see kind of messy but you'll be able to see that this is my regular water heater here um, that was already here long before I did the collector and that water from the collector comes over and comes right in right through here and if I ever have trouble with that that valve right there I can open that valve shut the valve on the collector uh, water tanks and just go right back to this system here without any problems at all um, just by itself and if I back up further, of course, then you're going to see the furnace. But that's not what this is all about. But you can kind of see the tight quarters getting in there. 
and uh, that is the collector, um, the, the complete setup. If you have any questions, um, feel free to leave a comment. Thank you.